Hey everybody, this is Nathan. I'm glad that you decided to tune in today, or I don't know if you actually tune in anymore, but I'm glad that you decided to watch this today. Uh, uh, there's been a, a topic that's been on my heart, or a part of the scripture that's been on my heart for the last couple weeks, and that is uh, the, script, uh, the passage in the Bible, Matthew chapter 25. And it's in, it's, uh, in regard to Jesus, the return, of Jesus, and uh, it's the parable of the of the wise, ver, uh, the five foolish and the five uh, five foolish and the five wise virgins. Uh, the parable of the ten virgins. Um, I'm going to read that scripture to you right now, and I want you to listen to it, and then I'm going to try to expound on on a little bit to help you, uh, hopefully, to help uh, bring some light to you about this. And I just pray that God will speak to you. Uh, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit of God has to say to him. And not let it be my words, but it be the words of the Holy Spirit that speaks to you through the Word of God. The Bible says uh, his word will not go forth void, but it will go out and it accomplish for that which it was sent out to do. And I believe that even through uh, YouTube videos and, and, and uh, Facebook videos and all these things, videos, uh, social media that we do and... And I, I thank God in a lot of ways these are just really awesome avenues to be able to do these things. But anyways, in Matthew chapter 25, the Bible says this, the parable of the ten virgins. Jesus' very word says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil and jars along with it, with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and they fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom came, bridegroom arrived, and the virgins who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, there all the, uh, later the others also came. So they came late. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Okay, so here's a little bit of a history. From what I'm understanding, the, the Jewish, the what the... It, some, sometimes the, the wedding uh, tradition would happen like this. The bridegroom would go to his, the groom would be at his house, and then over here was the bride's house, right? So he, the tradition was is at a certain time, and usually it was at nighttime, he went to go get the bride. After he got the bride, on the way back, he would pick up what we may call the bridesmaids today. And in this case, in this instance, there was ten of them. And then once he would pick up the bridesmaids, or the, the, the wedding party, or the virgins, okay, they would go along with him to, they would go along with him to his, back to his house, where they would have, you know, a, a festival, a banquet. They would have festivities and, and, and things, you know, going on towards the wedding. So, what was expected of these five wives, and I mean, of these the virgins, of these people they were picking up, is everybody was supposed to carry their own lamp. They were supposed to have, you know, enough. So when they walked at night, they would all have their own lamp, and that's how they would distinguish them of being a part of the wedding party or not. You had to have your own lamp. You had to have your own light. And as you were walking, and, and the, you were considered a party crasher or somebody that wasn't a part of the, uh, you know, you, you were somebody trying to infiltrate the and ruin the party if you did not have that light. So. You had to have the light in order to be a part of the party. That was the tradition. You had to do it. So, in this case, five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. They knew it was happening. They knew the bridegroom was going to come that night. And they knew, but he was a long time in coming. 
okay? So they, you know, they fell asleep, it got late, and they were like, man, is he ever gonna come? So they all got tired, but five of the five of them were, were wise, and they made sure to have enough oil, they made sure, sure they had their lamps. So even though that, they, you know, they got drowsy, they fell asleep, they were prepared at any time. So we can say, in, in, in regard to our lives, we should be prepared at any time for Christ's return. You know, even if you fall asleep and you go about your lives on a normal day-to-day -day basis, you should always be ready for Jesus' return. However, five of them were foolish and they didn't have enough oil. They were not prepared. They did not have they did not have the oil. They did not have enough to make it. They didn't they, because they just you know, they just I don't know why. They just you know, they obviously just thought they could get by on somebody else's or somebody that would hand them. So what happened in this instance is five of them said, hey, you know, we're going to go. And then the other five says, well, we don't got enough oil. And then please give us some of yours. And they're like, well, we don't have enough for me and you both. So if I don't, if my light goes out, I'm not going to be able to be a part of the, I won't be able to get into the wedding banquet. So they said, I can't give you some and, and me some too. We ain't going to make that walk. So you know, in reference to our lives. As a Christian, we need to be ready at all times. We can't, you cannot live on somebody else's religion. And, the you know, we the foolish ones thought they could. They thought they could live on somebody else's uh, uh, oil. That's how some Christians think today. They think they can live on somebody else's life. They think they can live on grandma or grandpa or mom and dad or their preachers or somebody else they know is religion. You cannot do that. You got to be ready and prepared yourself. You can't just call yourself a Christian. You got to be a Christian. You and some people just say they they say God with their lips, but their heart is far from him. They don't know God any more than 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 his name. That's it. I mean, the only God that they know is maybe the curse word that they hear people say, saying God's name in vain. But they still, if you would ask them on a piece of paper, if they're a Christian, they'd say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I love Jesus or whatever, because that's just the right thing to do. But, you know, you know, what some of the pre preachers in the past said, well, you know, you're going to go, there's going to be a lot of Christians uh, that go to hell with baptismal water on their face <laughs> because... They didn't really, you know, they did all the motions on the outside, but on the inside, they did not keep their lamps trimmed and burning. They weren't alive. Their their hearts were not aflame. They're, they weren't burning for the Lord. You got to be burning and ready for Him. You got to be on fire for Him. You got to be in prayer and 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 and. and in fellowship with Jesus on a daily basis by, you know, being involved in the church and being involved in prayer, being involved in 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 in, in God and in get knowing him on a personal level every day, knowing Jesus as your personal savior. So now I'm going to go flip over and so how do you examine yourself? I want you to examine yourselves because I don't want I don't want to accuse you of anything. But how do you examine yourself, know whether that you are are like that? How do you know if you're foolish? How do you know? I mean, I said some things right here, but the scripture interprets itself. In Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, the Bible says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God, Jesus Christ, he came to all men. It teaches us to say, no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and lives self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the coming of Jesus, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's how you know. Are you living, are you saying as a Christian, if you're a Christian and you're saying no to ungodliness, you're, you're in there. If you're if you're saying no to worldly passions, you're in there. If you're say if you're living a self-controlled, upright, and godly life in this present age, you're in there. You're getting the oil. You're filling your lamp up. 
you're doing all that, but if you're not, you're being foolish. You think you're just going to live your life any old way you want. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're going to get left behind. Jesus is going to come, and then you're going to be left behind, and you're going to be beating on the door and saying, whoa, 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 and he's going to say, I never knew you. I don't want that to happen to you. Get wise, my friend. Get on your knees. Repent to Jesus of your ungodliness, of your worldly, of your worldly passions. And start living an upright, godly life in this present age. And then you'll be keeping your lamp trimmed and burning. And you won't be a false Christian, but you'll be a real Christian. Because real Christians don't, it's not that they don't mess up. Real Christians strive every day to live a self-controlled godly life, upright godly life in God's sight. And they say no to ungodliness. They don't say, oh, it's okay. Blah, blah. They don't make excuses. They say no to ungodliness. What are you doing? Are you saying no to ungodliness? Are you saying, are you making excuses? Are you wise? Or are you foolish? You judge yourself. You examine your life. Get ready. Jesus is coming. He loves you. And he wants you to be ready. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning, my friend. Fill your oil tank full, full of God. God bless you. You have a great day.